Hi, this is Tim. And today's automation question comes from Stanley. In our video about how to configure a high-speed counter on an Allen Bradley Micrologics PLC, he asked, is there a bit that is zero when a counter is not counting and one when a counter is counting? And the short answer is no, but it's really easy to write a few rungs of code to do that. And while we're at it, we'll actually go through how to calculate the rate of change of a high speed counter. So if it was coupled to a motor, that would be what RPM is it running? So I've replicated the setup from that video. Now I'm not gonna go through how to configure the function file or anything like that because I have that whole video on it. I'll put a link to it in the description. So we're gonna start where that video left off. We had a functional program that if we went and we select frequency, we'll start out at 10 Hertz, which is 10 pulses per second. And we'll hit our up direction and you see our counter increments. And we can go to 100 Hertz, it's incrementing faster. One kilohertz or a thousand Hertz, it's incrementing much faster. And finally, 10 kilohertz or 10,000 hertz, and it's incrementing really fast now. I'm going to go back to 10 because I want to slow it down a little bit so we can see what's going on. And for now, we're just going to stop the movement of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some rungs to monitor this accumulated value and see if it's changing. Also, I'm going to put a timer in there first because I want to make sure that it, you know, has say it stopped for a second before we say that it has stopped. Um, and this will be very useful in a lot of applications where maybe you have a machine that has a little vibration in it or something so that whatever you're doing this is not going on off on off on off on off all the time so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add a timer and we'll just get to our timer tab and t-o-n and we're going to use t4 colon zero and we're just going to use a one second time base and a preset of one. And that's it for the first rung. Now there is no input instruction. There's nothing wrong with that either. Now we're going to add a second rung. So we're going to go back to the user tab and click new rung. And now we're going to go to the compare tab and find this any Q instruction here. That's a not equal to instruction. And we're going to go with for our source A, we're going to use this L90. Now, here's a little tip. I don't have to type that. Since it's in view here, I can click it and I can drag it until it's green here. And I can just let go of it. And that takes it down. Especially in your longer um, data addresses, that can be really helpful to make sure you get the right one. And then for source B, we're going to use another L9 data value. And we're just going to use L91, which right now is unused. And then we're going to going to use a move instruction and the move instruction is over here on the move logical tab and for our source and destination we're going to use the same thing that we have in this NEQ so you can just click this L90 and drag it to the source and you can click L91 and drag it to the destination now we're going to add a branch around that we'll go back to our user tab And then we'll put a branch and we're going to drag it over this move instruction. And here we're going to add a reset instruction for this timer. So we go back to our timer and counter tab and we're going to hit the reset. And we're going to reset T4 colon zero. Now what this is going to do is any time that these are not equal, which means that our high speed counter has moved or position has changed, it's going to reset this timer. All right, so now let's go ahead and put this into our program. So we're going to highlight those two rungs. We're going to click the accept current rung edits. Then we're going to click the test rung edits. And finally, we'll go ahead and assemble these rung edits. So now these are live. And right off the bat, we can see that our timer is done. It was a one second timer. There was a second there and all of a sudden it was done. Now let's go ahead and make our encoder move with our encoder simulator. Now we have frequency coming. We can see that right now our encoder is going down and now our timer is no longer done. We can reverse the direction. Timer is going up now and the done bit still is not set. So now I'm going to hit it and you can count right at one second. It is now done. 
So now that timer done bit is telling us whether our encoder is moving or not. Now let's take it a step further because it's great to know that our encoder is moving or our encoder is not moving. But what if we wanted to know how quickly it's moving? Well, we can do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to modify this program. And we're going to do it online. And I want you guys to be doing this online to learn more about online editing. And we're going to add an XIO instruction to our timer wrong. And we're going to actually do an XIO of this T4 colon 0. So T4 colon 0 dot DN. That's the done bit. Now one thing I didn't change is it still had this description in from an older program saying light timer. We should change that. So we're going to make this our one second sample time. And let's go ahead and accept that and make sure we understand what is going on here. So we're going to accept that. We'll test it and we'll go ahead and assemble it. And when you look at this, you will probably never see this encoder done. But it is actually done. If we go back to the PLC scan exercises we did, you'll discover that this timer done, but, oh, they're actually right there for a real quick blip. It did show done. But it'll be done whenever this reaches one second and it goes all the way through the program and then it comes back around. So that timer will be done for one scan only. Now, as we watch this, you may say oh, that it's erratic. It's not erratic. It's all in the timing of when RS Logix is reading values from the PLC. And it just happened to read it when that done bit was set for that one scan. So if you watch yours long enough, you'll probably see that happen again. So now that we have that one second sample rate set up, Every time that that done bit is true, we can subtract the current value of the high speed counter from the value the previous time and come up with how much it's moved in the previous second. Now we're going to go ahead and delete this wrong. And then we can go ahead and test that and assemble it. That'll get that out of there. And then we're going to go ahead and add another wrong. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the same t 4 colon 0dn and we're going to use an XIC instruction of it. Now we're going to do is we're going to go to our compute tab and we're going to use a subtract. And we're going to subtract L9 colon 0, which is our high speed counter accumulated value. And we're going to subtract it from the L9 colon 1, which is where we're going to store the previous scans value now. And we're going to put that in L9 colon 2. And this is going to be change in the last second. Now we need to add a branch around this. And now we're going to use a move instruction. And also, you don't always have to go up here and find the instruction. While it's on this little red while this red mark's on this corner, you can simply start typing move and hit enter, and you'll get a move instruction. And what we're going to do now is we're going to move L9 colon 0 to L9 colon 1. That way we'll have the value of the previous scan always in there. So let's go ahead and put this in. Accept, test, and assemble. And right now, our rate of change is zero. So let's go ahead and make this. Let's go. Let's go for the negative direction. So we're going to start our encoder backwards. And after one second, you can see now it's saying minus ten, and that is the ten hertz in the negative direction. And then we can go in the forward direction. Now you saw there for a second it said seven, and that's because it started reversing direction in the middle of that sample rate. But now we're up at ten, so now let's change our frequency. So it goes up to sixty-nine. Now it's at a hundred. Now we're at a thousand. And I'm going to hit it one more time and we'll be around 10,000. We can change our direction. We can, one, we can stop. 
Then we can change our direction. And now we're going a negative 10,000. So there is how you can, one, you can tell whether your encoder is moving. You can also get a rate of how quickly it is changing. That's all for this video. Uh, be sure to like this video, comment with any questions you have or anything you'd like for us to go over. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.